This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue reading from Book 2, Unlearning the World. In Chapter 1, this is Section 3. The world has no real cause. David Lesson 182 of the workbook refers to the metaphor that there is a child within you that needs your protection. This is not about protecting the ego. I would say that there is some confusion in the approach of therapies that talk about protecting the wounded child. You do not want to protect the ego because that is where all the defense mechanisms are. All defense mechanisms are attempts to protect the wounded, split-off self. The defenses need to be laid down. The course's path differs from the inner child work of going into a safe place with the inner child or redoing a scene. The course is about looking at your interpretations, which includes your so-called present memories, your daytime dreams where things are coming up. It is your interpretation of what is happening that you are reacting to. It is the interpretation that evokes emotion. Friend, I remember one of the main messages in the 12-step program was that we are powerless over alcohol, as if alcohol is the devil, which we have no power over. The message might as well be, I am a body. David, this is all about form and content. I see a parallel between AA's idea of being powerless over alcohol and the script is written. You are powerless over the script. The script is written. You cannot change the form. The only remaining choice you have left is how you look upon it. It takes a real opening in the mind to really see that you do not have control over events, but only over the way you perceive things. It means giving up the attempt to fix people or to change things on the screen. Friend, could you say in a sense we are in control? We have a choice about who to identify with at all times. Isn't that what you are saying? That in a sense who my guide is determines my perception. If I was driving home tomorrow night and got into a car wreck, I could look at it as if I have asked for this on some level. I am responsible, so hence I am not a victim in any shape, way or form. David, that is a good point. We can go into cause and effect a little deeper. In the next step, people may feel like, I have cancer. I am responsible for this. Or, I got in this car wreck and I lost my arm. I am responsible for this. Yeah. That is still big time guilt. You ask, What am I doing wrong? Or, Why did I bring this upon myself? The pure cause and effect relationship, the real one, is in heaven. 
God is the Father and the Son is the effect. Thinking that you have any causative power on the screen or with the script is level confusion. All causation is in the mind. When we get into the mind and in the idea of manifesting, the mind believes that there is some kind of creative ability that is connected with form. We have to start to realize that causation is always at the mind level. Once we start to see that there is nothing on the screen that can take away our peace, that there is no effect out there that can take away our peace, we prove that there was actually no real cause for anything that happened. It is a backwards way of disproving the ego. Obviously, if this world has no effect, then it can never take our peace away and we can generalize that to every situation. That is the way the Holy Spirit proves it. Aha! Then the world must not have a real cause and therefore the ego is disproved. That takes away all sense of guilt because in reality we never did anything to ourselves. Like our friend is always saying, we can say the script is written, but the script is unreal. Friend, if there is nothing out there on the screen, then we could not affect or affect anything. Trying to teach the course, for example, or trying to teach that a change of mind is possible, we can't really do that, can we? David In the ultimate sense, that is true. Using expressions like other brothers and helping is using the metaphor of a seeming split mind. Think about the idea of affecting another person's mind. It is kind of like the old voodoo thing. Even if we use the metaphorical sense of everyone having a separate mind, Jesus says that minds are equal. He says that he cannot take away our fear because that would be tampering with the basic law of cause and effect. Text chapter 2, section 7 He cannot come in between our thoughts and their effects. That is where another great relief comes in. You mean I have never been able to hurt anyone ever? And no one has ever truly been able to hurt me? That is a vast idea. Friend, it says in the development of trust section of the manual for teachers, the next stage is indeed a period of unsettling. Now must a teacher of God understand that he did not really know what was valuable and what was valueless. All that he really learned so far was that he did not want the valueless and that he did want the valuable. Yet, his own sorting out was meaningless in teaching him the difference. The idea of sacrifice, so central to his own thought system, had made it impossible for him to judge. Manual for Teachers, Section 4 We are not at peace yet. We still think that we have a way of determining what is valuable and what is valueless. Our belief in sacrifice makes this completely impossible because sacrifice is not real. But we think it is. 
So we have no basis for judging anything? David The course is about bringing causation back to the mind. In other words, before you can give another purpose to this dream, you have to first pull back from identifying as being the dream figure to seeing that you are the dreamer of the dream. When you know that you are the dreamer of the dream, you can accept another purpose and you can have a happy dream. Friend, you are in such peace because you do not judge anything. It seems to me that you are not projecting any attack thoughts. When you are not putting out attack thoughts, then the love comes forth, the love that we truly are. When that love comes forth, you do not judge anything because love accepts everything as it is. When my state of mind is free from what is happening on the screen, I can see that there are no real effects, so there must not be any real cause. David, we are getting pretty deep into this. Cause and effect relationships are the relationships of everyday life. In the world, if you water a plant and give it food, it will grow. That is seen as cause and effect. If the power goes out, the thought might be to check the fuse box or to attribute it to the storm. Do you see how it is assumed that there are causes and consequences in the world? Those are spurious cause and effect relationships. It is just a screen and there is not ever a cause. This is pretty drastic when you apply it to your own life. All of the mature judgments that we make about what is a good outcome and what is not, all the judgments of the world are based on learning these spurious cause-effect relationships. None of it is true. Starting to understand this can be kind of mind-blowing because the world as we know it is constructed on top of all these unreal cause-effect relationships. Friend, does the Holy Spirit use our cause-effect idea? Like, if you practice the course, the effect will be more peace of mind, which would have to be considered another spurious cause-effect relationship in the world? Does the Holy Spirit use these spurious effects to help us out of the illusion towards right perception? It seems like it is helpful to think that what you are putting out is coming back. If you put out love, then that is what you see. David The Holy Spirit looks not to effects. He is the presence of light in our minds. He works with the lower mind on its beliefs. The mind looks within and simultaneously calls forth external witnesses. The Holy Spirit is not doing anything with the slideshow on the screen. He is just working with the mind to give up the dark beliefs that are producing the slideshow. But it can seem as if, like our friend was saying, if I study the course and I apply it daily, daily there will be feelings of more consistent peace. This would be a spurious cause-effect thing because here is a person studying the book and going through life and it seems like the peace is coming more and more. But what really is taking place is that we quit judging 
and we quit interpreting things. It really does not have anything to do with reading a book. That was just the form in which this, de- this deceived mind could accept it. The symbol or the representation of the light of the remembrance of God is the seeming coming of this book into the world to this person that seemed to read it. Do you see how our personhood and our individuality are all symbols too? Friend, so you are saying that the script has been written and since all all is an illusion, you cannot affect it in any way? David, if you can give it another purpose, it will seem to be happy. Friend, so if you look at the script is written incorrectly, it is another way of saying the world is real. But the only reality is thought, the idea of God in mind. So the script is written can be summed up as the tiny mad idea and the fact that we are all in pretty good shape. The script is written means that it is all over, that we are all back. David, it is helpful to keep it in that context, that the script is in the past. As the Course keeps saying, the past is gone. If the past still seems to be present, if the script is written, still seems to be experienced as a present thing, there is a feeling of, oh no. Friend, I see what you are saying. Thinking you can affect the script just makes it real. It is the ego that is trying to do something, trying to get into effect. David For me, the joy has been in pulling back from participating in the script. You get so accustomed to doing and striving in the world. When you step back from striving, you may hear messages all around you like. You are nuts. You are crazy. You almost need a metaphysical basis. You need something to put your foot on, so to speak, to start withdrawing from the constant striving and participation That is where the Course helps. I can withdraw. I can approach more and more the I need do nothing section where it says that to do anything requires a body. It says that you are mind and there is a place in your mind that is so quiet And so still. You can reach into that place and there is no doing there. At one point in that section it says, At no single instance does the body exist at all. It is always anticipated or remembered. Text, Chapter 18, Section 7 That is a deep statement. You can see that only through thoughts about the past and the future does the body come in. And all the doings and all the strivings are just layered on top of that. That section is phenomenal. I know people who have studied the Course for years and when they get to those couple of sentences, they just flip out. 
here you are working with the lessons and working hard to get through 1200 pages. And then you come to the I need do nothing section. You think, whoa, what is this about? In that section he says, It would be far more profitable now merely to concentrate on this. I need do nothing. Than to consider what you should do. Text chapter 18, section 7. Oh my gosh, I am trying to follow this. I am reading and doing all these lessons and he is telling me that it would be more profitable to just concentrate on this? Can you see how that section is really a plea to come into stillness and just let go of all the ideas and concepts? One instant spent together with your brother restores the universe to both of you. You are prepared. Now, you need but remember. You need do nothing. Text, chapter 18, section 7.